Hi everyone, and today on the bench is a Williams driver board. This is from the System 3-7 to type games. Um, you may, may remember this CPU board. This is a flash board that uh, I did a video on not so long ago. Uh, repaired that, sent it back to the owner, but they couldn't get their game to boot. So I suggested they send me their driver board, as the most likely cause is going to be something on the driver board, shorting out the address or data bus, and stopping the CPU board from working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get power wired up, power it up and see what happens. Right, so the first step I'm carrying out is I've put the test ROM in and powered up the game from my bench power supplies. And let's just see, show you the LEDs. So this is the RAM test. Okay, so effectively just verifying that the CPU board is still working as intended. All we do now is turn the power off, connect this drive board up, and we'll see what the problem is. Right, so the drive board is connected, the test ROM is in and it's powered up and I didn't expect to see the test LEDs are flashing. Um, so, it's at least in test mode working okay. What I'll do next is I will connect up the display uh, and we'll put the game ROM back in and we'll see if any activity is happening at all on the display. Right, so, original ROM back in, display connected up and this is not what I was expecting to see. But the game's running, or at least it's uh, cycling in the track mode. No LEDs on, as we expect. We can hit the test button. We get the double flash. This appears to be fine, so this is not going to be a repair video. Uh, now we need to find out what is going on with this owner's machine. Uh, I suspect a power supply problem. I'm sure I asked him to check the voltages. Uh, before sending the boards in, but yeah, this uh, this appears to be absolutely fine. What I'll do is I will leave this running for a couple of hours. Oh, I've crashed. Obviously, I've done the test. Let me just uh, reboot it. So we'll reboot the power. Just get that to focus, so we can see it's back in uh, test. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's cycling through the track mode again. Uh, I'll leave this running for a couple of hours just to make sure it doesn't crash at any point. Obviously if I press the test button that crashes it because it puts into the test mode rather than uh, normal running. But um, yeah, we'll keep an eye on this and see if it's still running, but I don't think there's anything wrong. Right, so even though the, the board is booting up fine, when I've actually gone through and done all the tests, there are a couple of issues to deal with. So firstly, um, we've got the switch drives here, so I've tested all of those with my probe, they're all okay. Uh, and the switch inputs, uh, what you have to do is basically ground each one of these and then read the um, result at the PIA. Um, and was it, one, two, three, four, five, I think it was pin, I think it was pin five. Uh, grounding that is not resulting in pulsing on the PIA here, so we need to investigate that one. Uh, additionally, um, the lamp columns and drives are all dead, so you have to basically hook up an additional power to here and here. So that's your ground there, only 5 volt. And basically not getting any activity at all on the columns or rows, so I'm going to trace that back through the circuitry. Um, we've had some ICs replaced here, so we need to check that work, make sure that's been done properly, uh, and then check it back towards the PA. Right, this one's fairly obvious. Um, if we just look at some of the outputs on this PIA, they're all low. So everything's low on this. Let's try the other bank. Low, 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 and so on. Yes, yeah, so every, every output's low on that one. Uh, I'm just going to check the control signals are okay, but it's most likely that PIA there is actually dead. Okay, so I've fitted a new socket and a new PIA, and we should, hopefully, let me just get my probe. So we can immediately see, let's just pick a few random outputs. Um, so there we go. So yeah, so I've just tested basically a bunch of outputs on both banks, and I could, all the ones I tested were working fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to restart the test and go through the uh, lamp rows and columns and check that they're now working. I suspect they probably will be, so I'll get on with that next. Right, so we've got 5 volts basically jumpered over to J4, and then we test J5 for the strobe outputs of the lamp. So let's just do one at a time. 
Can't really see it great on the camera, but basically we're looking for a small flash of both the high and the low. I'm getting that on. Looks like we're getting that on every pin. hard to do so yeah so every uh, every one of those strobes appears to be working so next we are going to be testing the lamp rows which is so we need to get rid of the grounds here the lamps and then the the rows are here put the camera down while I was connecting that but we basically put a ground lead to J6 so I've clicked onto the ground on the edge of the board and then we just grab my probe we can then test each row we should see a grounded Pulse. So let me just get set up. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So all eight of those are now pulsing to ground. So that concludes the testing of the lamp section. Uh, we just need to check out this uh, the switch section. It's going to be something simple, probably, as it's only a single one that's out. Uh, I'll have a look at that now. Right, so here we are looking at the ICs around the switch section uh, and we can see that there are some leads on these ICs with, with uh, dry joints. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to reflow solder around this area, make sure everything's good and then retest because we might be able to solve the problem just by fixing the solder. Okay, while I'm uh, trying to re-solder these connectors J2 and J3, the pins are not taking the solder very well. It's almost as though they're corroded and uh, it will no longer solder cleanly. So I'm going to desolder these and put some brand new Molex connectors in, and then I'll retest after that. Right, so these two Molex connectors have been replaced. I've reflowed some dodgy solder joints. I'm just retesting. I can't actually do it on camera because I need two hands because basically it needs to ground one of the pins and then check on the PIA. Um, I've just done that for all of the switch rows and columns. Everything is now working on those. So we've got all that working, we've got the lamp matrix working. Solenoids tested absolutely fine before, including the special solenoids, all the reflexive triggered ones. Um, so I'm basically going to put this into my Gorgar game and give it like a final in-game test and then it's ready to go back to the customer. Thankfully, um, a fairly simple fix. Uh, for a change, uh, I seem to get a lot of dodgy fixes at the moment where it's lots and lots of faults. But basically we had two, two new connectors, some reflowing and PIA and that's fixed all the problems on this driver board. Right, thank you very much for watching.